Greetings. Assalamu alaikum, Hotepa Barigani, Tendai Mari, whatever your greeting of peace is, welcome, welcome, <coughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, we are at the Talk Black Radio Show here on Amiga FM. Enough respect to King Lion, he kept us busy, kept our minds thinking for the last two hours with his wonderful show. And I am here as ever with the Talk Black Pack. With my <laughs> I just thought that one up. You like that? You like that one? The talk that back, brother David, brother Trevon. Right now, our guest is here with us. My personal trainer, who you can tell I haven't seen for a little while, but uh, my personal trainer is also here. Brian is with us. Let's start with today's topics and the bits we want to get into. I know um, we always like to get into the news and try and give you a. A different kind of view and perspective than what you might be used to here on Talk Black Radio. So what we're trying to do is go through a lot of the stuff that's happened. Some of the stuff you'll know about, some you won't. But the perspectives, I'm hoping, will be new and will be something you can really get your teeth into. So stay with us for the next hour and 47 minutes as we chop it up and go through what's happening. My first point, which I have to say, you know, great condolences to the family, but we have a fallen soldier among us. Brother Dick Gregory passed. Mm. I saw this morning as I woke up. It was the first. That was the first post or the first text as I got with to say that Brother Dick Gregory passed. And um, I just really want to explain and go through some of his history because if you're not familiar with Dick Gregory, he may be known to some of you as a comedian from the the 50s and 60s. But he's actually one of our main activists in that whole entertainment industry and someone who, like, if you follow anything conscious that's been taking place for America or whatever, he's always on the front line, like just always. And you can see him right up until recently, um, always having something positive to say or always giving that kind of um, alternative view. So, you know, but Trevon, if you can just run down just some of the history of our brother and some of his great works. Well, we know that he passed away at the age of 84 and he was a comedian, first of all, so he was known for. In fact, uh, during the 60s, he was one of the biggest comedians in the United States. Um, he was basically paved the way for um, Bill Cosby, for Richard Pryor, those people um, that we know extremely well, paved the way for them. And at a point, when he began his career, he wasn't really into activism at the time, actually. Uh, there's a quote from him, actually, when they asked him about the civil rights movement and you know his role, and he said that, you know, humor can no more find the solution to race problems than it can cure cancer. So his oh, thing wow. was, and at the time, he was, I mean, that was at that point. But obviously something clicked in him and um, he decided to really take it on. We know that he was close with Martin Luther King, he was close with uh, Malcolm X. He's actually and a good friend of the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right, and so when he began to change his mind, in his, he started implementing certain things into his comedy and he was still extremely popular. But what they said was basically in the middle of the 60s, um, as the civil rights movement's beginning to build and build and get stronger, what happened was he started the, the things that he was booked to do, basically, uh, he, he was stopped going. So they would book him to be at a show here, and we've got the money ready and everything, and he's at a protest rally down mm. there, or he's performing for this civil rights activist group, or whatever. And essentially, he gave up his career, and they said that by the time the 70s came around, his mainstay was like college, black college campuses, that's what he was doing. Um, and you know how hard it is, like, if you're trying to work with us and trying to stand for freedom mm. the first place it gets hit is your pocket yeah the first place it always gets hit and when that get when that happens many people will stop turning around and go and hey 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 but if go you can stay on that again. and stay on it as long as he was and as strong as he was then you know we have to tip our hats or take our hats off to him so condolences to the family and all those who feel the loss of our brother dick gregory mm, there's a few there's a you know what it was I, I came across something that was really good this morning because i was reading some obituaries and whatnot and there was um we know democracy now is a news station Amy and Goodman Amy Goodman right a journalist there and she kind of she, he's been on he's been, he had been on her show quite a few times so she just put a few like interesting bits and pieces about him that I wanted to go for really quick and one of the things she spoke about was how um, in the how he was in jail multiple times he was, he was actually in jail um, for protesting and then in 1965 I believe it was or was it 1965 yeah, during the Watts riots he actually took he was actually shot while he was trying to calm down the, the protesters in 1965 he was shot in the knee in the knee yeah. yeah and then two years later he actually ran for mayor of Chicago that was in 1967 then the following year in 1968 he actually ran for president and they said that he got 1.5 million votes as a writing candidate uh, he was actually arrested during that time because he printed bills, you know, dollar bills, 
uh, with his face on as part of the campaign. Mm. So the US Treasury, they actually arrested him off the back of that. Um, but Because you actually are not allowed to print your own dollar bill stuff. Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that was his spirit, that was his spirit. And then basically, um, he began fasting quite a bit. So they said, in, said yeah. right, this is what we were talking about. So like in 1967, they said that he weighed about 280 pounds. I'll have to ask Google or Siri exactly how much that is in stones or that. But that's a significant... That's a significant... Yeah, that's a significant weight. Anyway, um, he began fasting in protest of the Vietnamese the war that was happening in Vietnam. Yeah. And in 40 days, didn't eat. And basically, at the end of the 40 days, I think they said he weighed 97 pounds. Okay. At the end of it. Uh, Brian, it, don't look at me, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. Um, so he took it, and then he began actually um, going on numerous hunger strikes for different causes um, in terms of segregation, in terms of um, drugs problems. In, in, in the community, and during that, you know we had the Iran hostage crisis, he actually went down to Tehran to actually try and help negotiate to bring back people, to free the prisoners. He traveled to Ireland to um, take part in, in advising some of the hunger striking IRA, IRA protesters as well. Mm. Um, and just throughout his life, whatever struggle was being held he was always interested in it. and even particularly when it came to our community like you said always on the forefront there's so many different if you go through youtube you can see him so many different events talking on so many different issues particularly where it concerns us as black people and it's just someone who's just dedicated their life really to the service of of their people and to oppress people generally so it's a yeah it's a it's a life well lived yeah this is it and i think when it's like that it's hard to be you know, downcast because it's someone who's used their time so well among us. So, mm. like I said, it's blessings, and then we our our hats go, our hats come off, and we have to, you know, big up our brother. But um, let's move on to the struggles of today. Um, news: All I've been hearing all this week: Donald Trump and what's going on in America. Everyone's talking about white supremacists. I think.